Hello, I'm Janine, and this is Janine Sews. It's the first weekend of spring, but it does not look very spring-like out there. It's snowing. It's been snowing for several days. It's going to keep snowing. Now, I've just made these spring pants that I want to wear. So, since I can't wear them outside right now, I'm just going to tell you about them. Tell you about the pattern, and also how I fitted them using top down center out. This project is actually a collaboration with Izzy of Dizzy Quilts and Sews. Izzy and I tend to sew a lot of the same type of garments, style of garments, and we're both members of Cashmere Club. Earlier this year, we thought that it would be fun to do a collaboration, so we chose the Esmond cargo pants from Cashmere. Izzy and I are both Canadians. I'm in Calgary. She's in Montreal. It's a long way between the two of us, but we're both Canadians. We have a lot of the same experiences. We shop at the same stores, so we thought it would be really fun to put together a collaboration. I'm linking Izzy's video down below so you can see her Esmond cargo pants. Izzy is working, so her focus was more on something that she would wear to work. Whereas because I'm not working, my focus is more something that I could wear every day. Going out for lunch, going shopping, traveling, or even if I just want to look a little bit smarter when I'm at home. So I'm going to tell you about these, and then I'll put them on so you can see them. And then I have some video snippets of when I was fitting them for Top Down Center Out. And I'm also going to show you the many things in my closet that will work with these pants. So the pattern that I used is Cashmere Club Esmond Cargo Pants. Many pocket options and the ankles are either tied with a drawstring or they have elastic. I decided to do a full-on fitting for these first. Even though Cashmere does a very good job of providing with fitting guidance in their pants patterns. Last year I made the Creston jeans and I think they fit quite well. So I knew I was probably going to have a good experience with these but I decided to do proper fitting before I cut into the fashion fabric. But I'll show you that later. The fashion fabric that I used is a viscose twill. About 25 years ago, when I was poor and I had practically no clothes, I once bought a very nice pair of sort of upscale casual viscose twill cargo pants. I've even got a picture I'm going to pop up here. I was much younger when I had these and I wore those pants all the time because I liked the shape on me, I liked the style, and I wasn't working then, I was waiting for my green card, and they were something that I knew I could wear out and look a little more spiffy than I would have in jeans or capri pants. So that's what I had in mind when I picked out this fabric. The color is called Petrol and it just works with a lot of the teal things that I have in my closet. Let's see how much I can show you of these before I put them on. So here we are. Fly waist, two buttons on the outside, and one hidden button on the inside. The back has a section of elastic that is sewn into the waistband. It's supposed to have belt loops, but I never wear belts, so I left them off. On the pattern, there are two, well, you could put on one. There are patch pockets in the front. Then I put a pleated pocket with a flap on the side. You just put one on. And I think that turned out, oh, there's a thread. There's always a thread. 
I think that turned out pretty well. There's no closure on it, but that's a good place to throw your phone even if necessary. Then on the back, there were a couple of options for pockets. I sewed this, this side, sorry. This side is a pocket with a hidden zipper. So the zipper is underneath the flap. Can't see it? There's the zipper. And it didn't really matter that the zipper color wasn't perfect because it's hidden. Then because I didn't want to do zipper pockets, pockets on two sides because it was complicated, I just replicated, replicated the zipper pocket on the other side and I added a couple of tags. One is one of my kitty paw tags and the other tag is from Sew Over 50, from Sew Over 50 Frock Tales and it says Sew Over Ageism. I finished all the seams on the inside using the serger and I finished them separately. I didn't serge them together, I serged them before I stitched the seams. Okay, so I need to change something. And then, and another thread. Gosh, I didn't do a good job of trimming threads. And here on the inside, more labels. This is one of my standard labels. And then a little Canadian flag label that I got in the Our Social Fabric Countdown box last year. And the cuffs are elasticated. So I'm going to put these on and let you see them. I'm trying to make sure that I don't have any orphans in my closet and that things work together and I was very pleased to see that a number of things I have in my closet will go well with these pants. The first is this Maven Somerset tee that I made a couple of years ago and it matches nicely. The forget-me-not Vera top that I made last year for So Frugal matches really well and I wear this all the time. Is this the brattle? Brattle top? Cashmere at brattle? Matches well. This is the Style Arc Rhea top that I made a couple of years ago and I think this goes well enough to be worn together. I can't remember the pattern number. This is a McCall's top that I made a few years ago using Liberty Lawn and it goes really well. It's hair tight. And then of course I can wear a number of different things with this vest and these pants. And this top, which is the Breton Tee from the Great British Sewing Bee from Stitch to Style book. And I made this a couple of years ago. I'm going to change now and show you a couple of new things that are this spring's outfits. You've seen all this stuff before, but these were pieces that I kind of bought together. When I decided to make these, I knew that I wanted to do actual fitting. So I decided to use the top-down center out method again, which was created by Ruth Collins. 
and it was first highlighted in threads from summer of 2022. And Ruth walks through it here. Where's the page? And then there are a number of people. The Crooked, the crooked Seam, The Crooked Hem has done a series of videos that are very good. She explains things far better than I ever could. But I did record a little bit of video when I was fitting these that I'm gonna pop in here and then I'll come back and I'll just kind of give you a summary. I'm dressed for the gym, but before I go to the gym this morning, I'm working on my toile. So I have made the waistband and this is just two layers of muslin and I have stitched so this black line here, that's actually the stitching line and I've placed the waist where I want it, which is below my natural waist, which is here. So it's, it's below my natural waist. I have marked the pieces so I know what's what. This line here this is the original cutting line, and I've added extra above that. On the inside. This black line is the original cutting line, and I've extended it, and I've actually stitched along the original stitching line. And then I have stitched the outside seam to the notch, which is at about the knee. I've stitched the inside seam all the way down and I have marked where the hem is. So what we do, just put this one leg on and we start at the top center. So, Here's my, here's my original cutting line. Here's my seam line. So I'm just gonna pin where I should be stitching. And the front looks pretty, pretty good. Gosh, this has got a low crotch on it. Is that supposed to be that low? I'm gonna have to do a little research. The hip is huge. Back. What I have to do here is match the notches for the back. I'm going to stop and take a look at those notches. So the first thing I'll do is get the waistband where I want it. Right now it's really high. I want it down a little bit lower. And there's a line of stitching here. That's the top when the waistband is finished. So, so here's where the fly will be. And there's a little catch there. Let's just see if we can lift this slightly and get it. Okay, I have now basted everything where I had made the adjustments. There's one more adjustment that I'm going to make. And on the side here, I do need to take in some more for the hip. And you can see there's a slight line there I think that's just a matter of when the waistband with the pocket and everything that shouldn't be there. But no lines, no wrinkles. Of course, this is going to be stitched and the same in the back. It's 9.05 a.m. I started, when I turned on the camera, it was like 8.24. So 31 minutes. So the only place that I made any changes were along the hips. This, let's see, sorry, wrong side. This black line here, that's the original seam line for the hip. And the dotted line here is where I actually did sew. So I, this is the top of the hip and almost down to the knee. I took off 
a total of maybe three inches at the widest point of the hip. These took a lot longer to sew than I had anticipated. Some things were just complicated. The pockets, I was trying to align everything really nicely. I followed along with the So So Live Sew Through video. It went really quickly. It's a good video, but it goes very quickly. And I found that I had to rewind things many times. And eventually I just went back to the instructions that Cashmere provided and they were very good. It's a long instruction booklet. I'm glad I printed it out. I would sew these again, especially now that I have made the investment in fitting them. I do need to take in the waist a smidge, mostly because these are wovens and they're gonna stretch out a little bit when I wear them. So what I may do instead of actually taking in the waist is just remove some of the elastic in the back so that it cinches me in a bit more. I love this fabric. It's nice and cool and I think it would be wonderful to wear on a warm weather holiday. And the style, the cargo pants style is not trendy, but not old lady, frumpy. It's what you're seeing in the store. If you don't like the elastic at the ankle, you can just leave that off and wear them just to short, straight pants. My cargo pants that I had in 1999 were just straight ankle length pants. But they are a nice style for older women and cashmere sizes for people who have less of a waist, have more hips, have a belly, all of those things. So they are easier to sew. Next time I make these, the first thing I thought of using was like parachute pant fabric, which is really pushing me back into the 90s, isn't it? But something like that that wouldn't crease would be really good for taking on a holiday. Not that I have a holiday plan for a long time, but um, definitely for wearing around in the summer. And of course they're good for wearing shopping, out for lunch, running around, anywhere. It's a nice style, it's a nice casual style. And all of the pockets are very good, especially if you golf. If you golf and your golf club lets you wear cargo style clothes, these pants with the gusseted pocket would be perfect. I made a golf skirt three, four years ago out of bengaline and I added a gusseted pocket to the side of the skort. Really good for a bunch of golf balls, tees, ball markers, things like that. So if you golf and if your golf club will let you wear cargo pants or cargo shorts, these are a good option. So these are the Cashmere Club Esmond cargo pants. If you haven't yet checked out Izzy's video, there's a link down below to Dizzy Quilts and Sews. She records a lot of videos. She is a much faster sewist than I am. She makes a lot of really great things. So do check out her videos. If you are not a subscriber, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel. I do try to record something every week, as long as I have something interesting to say. My next video is going to be Friday Sews next week, which is also my Sew Frugal 24 video. So I spent a lot of time sewing these pants. I gotta get moving on my Sew Frugal stuff. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope everything is good in your world and I will see you really soon.